For a series as diverse as IndyCar, it's really strange that not too many drivers hail from the land down under. Throughout IndyCar history, in fact, there's only been seven drivers from Australia. The most renowned and successful of these is easily Will Power, who's one of the best drivers of all time. But besides him and a few others, I doubt you know these guys' stories, let alone the tale of the first Aussie to race in IndyCar outside of the Indy 500. Today, however, I'm here to change that, because although not too many people have heard of him outside of his home country, He's one bad fast racing driver that deserves his own due. In this episode of All IndyCar, we talk about Vern Schupan. Welcome back to All IndyCar, the motorsports history show looking at the most interesting stories in American open wheel racing. Vern Schupan was born in the pretty empty south state of Australia on March 19th, 1943. More specifically, he was from Wyala. In his early years, Vern had found success in various separate Australian karting championships, and he would get into cars by 1969. He made a bit of a leap in this time, moving all the way to the UK with his wife to race there, mainly because his father wasn't too keen on him being a driver. Making his car racing debut in British Formula Fords, Vern would impress enough that by 1971, he was competing in and winning the British Formula Atlantic Championship. For 1972, he was already a test driver for BRM and F1. He even qualified a BRM car for the 1972 Belgian Grand Prix. However, he won't actually start the race as future Red Bull F1 advisor Helmut Marko took over the car for the race. He would race later that year in two non-championship Grand Prix for the team. Eventually, Vern's relationship with BRM fell apart, so for 1974, he left the team and began racing in F5000 and would also race for the dreadful Ensign team in F1. While he won a race in F5000, his time in F1 was frankly awful. At his seventh race weekend for the team, Vern would avoid near disaster after his throttle stuck while practicing around the Nordschleife for the German Grand Prix. He told the team what was going on, and after they blamed him for the team's awful pace, he left them as well. With no options in F1, he returned to lower level single seaters, including racing in the Macau Grand Prix where in 1974, he won by four laps. It was clear that Vern had talent, barrels full of talent, he just didn't have the chance to show it off on a big stage. However, starting in 1976, he would get on the right path to get there. That year would see Vern make his IndyCar debut at the 1976 Indy 500. Vern would be the highest qualified rookie, starting in the middle of the sixth row. He would also be the highest placed rookie when the race was called on lap 102 for rain, giving him the 1976 Indy 500 Rookie of the Year award. That would be his only start in the series for 76, but for 1977, he would return for various teams. The year was pretty up and down, with three top 10s getting overshadowed by four DNFs and a failed attempt at the 1977 Indy 500. Unfortunately, this tone would really be the one for his whole IndyCar career, as he either retired from the races or finished very well. His best result in IndyCar came in 1981, where he finished third at the Indy 500. Besides that, however, his IndyCar career wasn't too much to write home about. Exactly why I'm not dwelling on it. The main thing to come from his IndyCar stint, though, was the fact that he came third third place at the Indy 500. Porsche would see his great drive there and sign Vern to race in their endurance program, where in 1983, he won the 24 Hours of Le Mans with co-drivers Hurley Haywood and Al Holbert. Although his IndyCar career wasn't memorable, it put him on the right track to find his greatest success in racing. After his retirement from racing, Vern was still very influential, mainly coming from his support behind bringing the Australian Grand Prix to Adelaide. Despite the man's success, he isn't remembered by many people, which I think is a real shame, but hopefully with this video, I've shown a quick spotlight on this man's career. 